Hi, I'm Steven from Patchworks, and today in front of me, I have the SSF Zephyr. This is the latest oscillator from uh, Steady State Fate. It's a analog oscillator with through zero modulation. So at first glance on the front panel of the Zephyr here, there's quite a lot going on. Uh, you have a fairly extensive patch bay down here and uh, quite a few knobs to twiddle with. So starting from the top down, at the very top here we have a octave shifter. Then we have a fine tuner that can be set to be fine tune, coarse tuning, or you can go all the way down to LFO rate. Over here is going to be your pulse width for all your pulse width modulation goodness. And then in the center here, this is kind of like a little special sauce about this module. This is their Z wave. So this allows you to flip between essentially a sine wave with uh, wave folding over to a pulse wave with pulse width modulation. And it seamlessly blends between the two. So up here in the top left corner, we have this three way switch that's labeled Z mod. And this switch determines how the input going into the Zmod uh, input jack is being processed. So at the top here, you have through zero FM. And in the middle, you have something that they call a Z-Sync or Zinc. And at the very bottom, you have flip. Moving on to the pulse width side of things here, you actually have two flavors of pulse width modulation. You have edge pulse width, which is the more traditional sound and style of pulse width modulation you're probably used to hearing. Then you have center. And center is gonna, it's a pretty cool sounding, um, almost phasey effect. And we'll dive into that in a little bit and you can see with the data. So, and then over here, you have your exponential and, or linear switch for just standard FM. And then right down here is your entire, is all of your patch points. You have your input for pulse width modulation, for wave folding, uh, input for the Z mod, FM modulation for the Z wave, uh, one volt per octave tracking, uh, hard syncing input and index. And over here, you have all your outputs. You got your saw, pulse, sine, and triangle, your basic wave shapes. And on top of that, you have a sub oscillator that can be one or two octaves down, uh, determined by the switch right here. And then you have your Z wave out. So these four outputs here, your saw, pulse, sine, and triangle, are like your basic wave outs. But the Z wave is where this module gets uh, really spicy. All right, so I'll quickly just patch in the different outputs here into the data so you can listen to and see what they actually look like. So let's start with the sawtooth wave. So it's a fairly standard sawtooth. You know, cool. It's actually a really good sounding sawtooth if I might say so. Um, then moving on to the pulse wave. So let's actually start with the uh, edge pulse width modulation. So you can see over here on the data, it looks just like and sounds just like your traditional pulse width modulation. But check out what happens when I switch it over to center. So instead of modulating the entire cycle, it actually kind of splits it up from the center point there at zero, which is really cool and results gives you uh, this really cool um, phasey kind of sound especially at lower frequencies for that bass. Ooh. Back over to the edge. All right, moving on, we got sine wave. Very clean, very pure. And we have triangle. And this right here is the sub wave. So the sub output here, is a square wave, but it's not a traditional looking <laughs> square wave. It has some sort of uh, center pulse width modulation, center pulse width modulation happening, even though there's actually no modulation. Um, however, it does, the pulse width modulation does apply to the sub oscillator. So you can check out the pretty shapes over here.
All right, and the final output here that we have yet to listen to is the Z-Wave out, and this is the uh, spicy output, like I said earlier. So it starts off pretty pure. Um, the Z-Wave is all the way over to the left, and so you essentially get a pure sine wave, but with wave folding. So I can start turning up this fold knob right here. You can start seeing it folding in on itself. Very cool. Then we can blend it over to the pulse side. So if we start turning this knob to the right, you can see it start introducing uh, essentially a square wave or morphs it into a square wave. And we still have all your pulse width modulation goodness available. The other thing that makes this Z-Wave output so cool is that you have this Z-Mod and Z-Wave as well as index uh, CV inputs. So Z-Mod is right now set to be through zero FM modulation. So I'll just grab an LFO right here from Function and we'll send it right into Z-Mod. And as I speed it up, all the way into audio, right? Get some really cool, almost like bell tones, but with a slightly grittier sound to it than what you would get from a, a standard FM input. And so let's see what this sounds like on the pulse side of this Z-Wave. find some of those sweet spots right around there. Yeah, there you go. So let's see what happens when I change the type of uh, Zemon modulation. Let's go over to Zinc. So you can see it's literally flipping the wave here. And now we're back to square one. So let's say we want to apply some sort of uh, modulation to our modulator. That's what this index input is for. So what I can do with Zmod all the way up, let's go back to three zero, let's find that sweet spot again. I can grab a envelope from Rainier, let's quickly send it to some gates, and then pass that over to the index. So now we have an envelope affecting how much of the LFO from function is going into the Z-Mod. So when you have index patched in, the uh, attenuator here for index will also determine the level of the index CV input. So that's about all the features on the front panel here of the Zephyr. Uh, let's just try modulating and getting some cool sounds out of this thing. So I'm going to grab the Z-Wave out again, but this time I want to send some audio rate modulation into the pulse width input. And turn it up on the attenuator. 
let's really speed it up. That's super gnarly. Let's see what happens if I take the inverse of the output of function, patch it into fold, turn the attenuator up. So currently we're not going to hear any of the waveform that's happening because our Z-wave is all the way to the right in pulse. We can start morphing it and blending the fold side and the pulse side. And as you can tell just from looking at the data here, we are getting some very complex waves. See what happens when I send the same uh, inverted signal from function into the Z mod. Let's go all the way back to pulse. and uh, let's send it into the Z-Wave. So that's really cool sounding. So right now what's happening is this envelope from Rainier is taking the Z-Wave and essentially it's going from pulse width really quickly back down to fold side. And so we're kind of getting the uh, best of uh, both worlds in terms of the timbre from this thing. All right, and so that was just a quick little uh, overview and sound demo of the new SSF oscillator called Zephyr. Um, it's now available at Patchworks. Go check out our website, come to our showroom, come play around with it.